Hello and welcome to the Taskmaster podcast. It's Ed Gamble here, your host, as always, for the Taskmaster podcast. And it's a very special day here at the podcast because we are moving on to a new series of Taskmaster. As you all know, we are currently delving back through the archives, watching Taskmaster from the beginning in order. And would you believe it, we have reached series four. This is incredible. It doesn't seem like yesterday since we started on this journey, but we are here. We are at series four. A few more episodes in this series, a bit more time to get in depth with all the characters, all the tasks, all the decisions, where Greg went wrong, if he did go wrong. Spoiler warning, I always think Greg goes wrong. Uh, and where Greg went right. Uh, we'll be chatting to special guests every week about each episode of series four of Taskmaster in depth. And I'm very happy to say that today's special guest is Mark Watson. Of course, not from Series 4, he's from Series 5, but it's going to be a while until we get to Series 5, and we've not had Mark on yet, so we thought, get him on, we know he's a fan of the show, good friends with Alex, of course, so he has to watch it to be supportive, so he knows his stuff. Now, obviously, we want you to watch along with us. There's no point listening to this if you haven't watched this episode recently, unless you've got some sort of photographic Taskmaster memory. So, go and watch episode one of series four. That is, of course, available on all four, where you can find all of the episodes of Taskmaster. Watch episode one, series four, listen to this episode, watch episode two, come back next week to hear us chat about episode two, and so on and so on until the end of time. Essentially, what I've done by taking on this podcast is sorted myself a perpetual podcast. This will never end. If they keep making Taskmaster, this will never end. And I'll be honest, I'll just go all the way back to the beginning if I have to. So let's hear Mark Watson chat about episode one, series four. Welcome, Mark Watson, to the Taskmaster podcast. Hi, Ed. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, thanks very much for coming on the podcast to chat about Series 4, Episode 1. Of course, famously a series that you were not in. Yes, it was the series before. In fact, if anything, the whole series had this kind of holding its breath sense <laughs> because they, they knew they must have known I was coming. Right, the, the shadow of Watson hangs over the whole thing. It's the shadow of Watson, yeah. Once or twice you see Greg refer to the shadow of Watson and no one knew what the phrase meant at the... Uh... <laughs> Actually, I think at the time I... I think I was maybe booked for the following series, like roughly while this one was on or something. Because yeah. so, I remember watching it thinking, God, I'd love to do that. And also being mates with Horn, thinking it, it's, it's, you can't really just out and out ask your friend if you can be on their show. But it was getting yeah. to that stage. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I suppose once it's once it's series four is on, it's very much tick, TikTok. Come on, Alex. Yeah, because at that point, it still wasn't certain. I mean, it was already popular, but I didn't know how long it would last. If it had come and gone without me ever getting my moment, a key having been in the first series, of course. I mean, it wasn't, it's not like Alex just has full control over it, but it, for a while, it didn't matter too much. But then you'd be in group conversations and other people asking Alex about Taskmaster and talking about how much they like it and stuff like that. And yeah. inevitably, people would ask, when are you going to be on it? And that was yeah. very unpleasant for me and Alex. <laughs> So I reckon I was just, by Series 5, it was simply too embarrassing not to. And you can't really ask Alex, you can't say, Alex, can you put me on Taskmaster because we're not quite sure how long it's going to last. No, Alex, while this format holds up, can I can I have a crack at it? But um, obviously, it, mind you, these days, people more or less do that because it's such an iconic uh, thing now, because it's so established. People will often ask me if I can get them on Taskmaster because I'm friends with Alex. They assume I've got like a tunnel that I can smuggle them through straight into the Taskmaster house or something. I've had that happen a surprising amount because I think I'd always be, I'd be too ashamed to try and blag my way onto any show via a favour from someone I barely... But maybe that's how yeah. people think it works. But um, yeah, I don't normally take these requests onto Alex because it would it would be very strange to try and do that, I think, for both of us. Yeah. I get, and I guess the sort of person who's asking you is probably someone that Alex wouldn't necessarily consider putting on. If, if they're going, okay, the only way I'm going to get on Taskmaster is I'm going to, <laughs> straight to Watson yeah. and pass it on to Alex. Presumably Watson holds the key. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I've got friends who the whole friendship has been about cultivating that so that they can one day be on Taskmaster. But no, you're right. The irony of it is it, either the person's probably not on the radar or Alex it, has already thought about them, yeah. in which case me saying, oh, they'd love to do it, probably doesn't exactly swing it. He's not just waiting for five people to put their hands up.
Um, so obviously, yeah, you mentioned you're friend, friends with Alex, and of course, you do no more jockeys with Alex and uh, and Tim Key, uh, and you've done We Need Answers in the past as well. A, a strong working relationship going into your series of Taskmaster. Yeah, it made it slightly odd because obviously, when you um, th- there's a sort of protocol that you don't really discuss the tasks with other contestants, and you never see each other. Basically, you don't really talk about the show while you're in it. Um, because it's so there's so much potential for spoilers, I suppose. So it was odd for me and Alex not to know how much to discuss it or not, because it is a long filming period, of course. You can't not talk about something for it's a pretty big elephant in the room if you're yeah. making a TV show together. For I think my mind was stretched out over about six or seven months, because in those days they only made one series a year. So it was which meant by the time you watched the tasks back, you, you barely had any memory of some of yeah. them. And it would send a shudder down your spine when you realised. <laughs> so, but there was one time that Alex, I think I went and stayed at Alex's after a filming day. Um, and looking back, that was the only day that I got. So we, we generally didn't discuss it very much. And we certainly didn't discuss anything about what the other people had done because that would have felt sort of unholy. Yeah. But um, there was a moment, which I occasionally look back on where, uh, we'd had a couple of drinks and he said, and what about the text to Greg? Are you still keeping that up? And um, <laughs> obviously I didn't think anything of it. it. It didn't ring the alarm bells that it should have done. The, yeah. I, I now know he was especially interested in that because that whole uh, that whole task depended on me doing it, obviously. Yeah, there was, <laughs> no, there was no way of discussing what other people were doing with that one. No, that was there was no plan B for that task. Either it would be in the <laughs> show or wasn't. And I, I do remember just very faintly thinking, that's odd. He doesn't normally directly uh, address a task like that, but the moment was gone and it only came back to me months later that the reason he was following that story was because uh, <laughs> he had no way of knowing whether that would uh, pay off. That was the only glimmer I ever had of a uh, of a clue from Horn, I think, yeah. about anything that was happening. Um, obviously, he never told me anything that was coming. It, in the actual tasks, it was funny because... Uh, it was sort of futile to try and conceal the fact we were friends. Yeah. So we sort of lent into it and just politely chatted as mates during a lot of the tasks. <laughs> but at the same time, he's still there with his clock, his eyes boring into you. So there's a limit to how uh, how much like friends you feel. And also, of course, there was that episode where I, they changed all of the scene and I failed to recognise that it wasn't Alex anymore. It was a complete stranger. So in some ways, the friendship was tested, I suppose, by the series. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and you were you were in the original live Taskmaster as well, the, the Edinburgh Festival version of Taskmaster. Um, do you have mm. any particular standout memories from that? Yeah, not everyone knows that, but Alex trialled the idea as a, as a thing where, uh, again, none of us knew who the other ones were. You just got an email every month um, asking you to complete a task. And... Uh, and then you'd get scores. So it was all done remotely until the Edinburgh Festival when we all met for the first time. Um, one of my main memory of it is that at the time I just had a baby. So um, every time the email would come in, it would be like, hack the biggest thing to pieces with a chainsaw that you can. And I'd think, I just can't do that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, it sounds really fun, but I just, occasionally I would do well in one. The best one, uh, the one I performed best in was... Uh, the, the t- he was in Melbourne and so was I one one year, well, that year, uh, during the month of April for the Comedy Festival. Yeah. So the task for that month was uh, find the best thing for Alex to do in Melbourne. And because I was there, I had a big advantage. So I arranged to meet him via a series of notes. I lured him to a hotel or something that wasn't our hotel. Um, and then we just got in a lift and I just made him stay in the lift with me for about an hour. And we just went up and down, up and down. And I'd written a series of postcards about our friendship, my feelings about, about it, stuff like that. And I just read them out to him while he listened in silence. Basically. I think I did win that task, even though it can't have been his best day in Melbourne. No, that can't. I mean, it's not, no offence, Mark, but that sounds like a genuinely awful way to spend a day. Yes, I think I sort of had revenge in mind by that point, yeah. basically. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what what are your I mean let's let's talk about your highlights from your series and then I want to know your general highlights I mean I'm assuming as a friend of Alex you are a dedicated fan of Taskmaster and watch every single minute of everything he does I've watched a fair bit of it yeah um I think I mean my highlights are uh people always talk about the song that Nish and I wrote and um I do have fond memories of that but um well certainly with hindsight I'm proud of it because it's probably the most it's been the most reaction I've had to anything I've done in my life, basically. The, uh, well, yeah, the, I mean, the reaction to that is abso- absolutely amazing. It was sort of... still talk about it. It was quite unexpected. I mean, we thought the task had gone well, and then it, 
every time the credits rolled, there was a, or the, the titles at the start, there was a um, two second clip of us playing it as one of the, you know, so, and every time Nish and I would look at each other thinking, is this going to, is it going to be this episode? Cause surely we'll at least look good doing that. Yeah. But they left it of course till the very, very end. Um, and when it was broadcast, I was in Japan, weirdly, I was on holiday. So I, I slept through the actual um, broadcast of it um, and woke up and my phone was absolutely full of people talking about the song. At first I thought I'd, I couldn't work, I'd forgotten it was even on. Yeah. So I, I just assumed I'd become an overnight pop sensation, but <laughs> I wasn't clear how exactly. <laughs> Already in Japan, ready for the tour. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, maybe, maybe something I've done in Japan has turned me into a J-pop uh, star. <laughs> but um, it, weirdly, one of my favourite moments is... Um, also with Nish, the same filming day, which was the tipping the yogurt off a cherry picker thing. The yeah. biggest splat was the task. Love that. Yeah. Um, it's funny. Occasionally, quite often, I would dither about um, with the, reading the task and then thinking I'd burn the first five minutes or something, just not knowing what to do. Whereas other people, you'd see them just launch in. Yeah. Um, but Nish is much more of a sort of feet first type operator as you know in life and in uh yeah uh, so we opened the envelope it was pouring down with rain i remember uh we're in the in the car park there outside the house uh, i read the card i think that said make the biggest splat and instantly nish said well i'm thinking yogurt and um <laughs> as if he as if he for months he'd been thinking if i was called upon to make a splat it has to be yogurt yeah so as soon as he said it i was like i suppose you're right yeah <laughs> it was it was one of the fastest game plans i've ever had um but I think obviously it, it, the setup was absolutely astonishing. This cherry picker in a, a public park, people, I think they'd cleared an area, but people sort of were standing to watch understandably. Yeah. Um, and then getting a boiler suit on, we, we discussed who was splatting whom. And um, I, I didn't fancy particularly going up on the cherry picker, but then, and Nish was quite bullish about it. Um, yeah. I thought I've sort of got the easy job if I'm just being spat because I've just got to lie there. But then when I got given the, the boiler suit and especially the mask and visor and stuff like that, I thought yeah. you'd wear less than this going into war. And I, it's only then I started to ask myself how hard it would hit you at, at that sort of velocity. Yogurt. We, we all remember what happened to Ant McPartland. So you know, you <laughs> exactly. Got to wear the goggles. Nothing I safe. I know that wasn't yogurt. No, but it, it's a good example of the, the importance of face coverings. Yeah, well before we knew that face coverings prevented uh, the spread of disease. Yeah. So, it, so I did start to feel quite nervous putting on all that gear um, and then and having to lie down in what we thought was the spot, all this business. Um, and then there was another dimension to it, which was that when he got up there, Nish started to get quite jittery because it was a lot higher than it sort of looked from the ground. So he was, I was lying on the floor, sort of spread eagled for maximum yogurt coverage and i could just hear kumar going i don't like this actually i don't know i can do it i don't fancy this i'm thinking well i mean someone's got to get that yoga off, off them <laughs> i thought for a minute we would be an on pass where i would have to either swap places with him or i would have to try and persuade alex to yeah. create this black which i wouldn't put past myself to just force horn to do it and then the f he had he had a trial cleverly he had a trial go at it where he just tipped a tiny bit of yogurt to sort of get a get a marker like in darts and um it went slightly wide, so then I knew where to yeah where to lie. All this all this time going through my head, it does a lot on Taskmaster, but it was an especially a strong moment of thinking, how on earth is this my life and career? <laughs> what? Really, not in a bad way, just more like there are people at work now, yeah. and um, it's about three in the afternoon. You can never predict what what your career is going to end up as. <laughs> you really can't. Floor, being being pelted with yogurt uh, from Britain's foremost satirist. I, I remember having that thought quite quite intensely. I remember thinking about twenty years ago, I would have been in a sixth form school in some lesson, and if I'd been shown this and said, "This is what this is where it ends up," I would have thought, "Well, is that good news or not?" Because I can't really <laughs> I can't really make out what's going on here. But it doesn't look like anything my teachers. Uh, or careers advisors have been suggesting will happen in the future. Um, and what about what about from across the across all the series? Do you have a do you have a favourite a favourite mm. moment that sticks out? Well, I think because of being friends with Alex, um, I've always enjoyed uh, moments where people put him in very difficult, of awkward course. situations, which happens constantly, of course. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. is it? I think it's the first series. Roisin made him eat all those pies uh, yeah. to, because you had to work out the contents of the pie without without breaching the, the and that, I was watching that thinking that's exactly what I would have done. I would have just yeah. forced him to read them. But you'd have to know Alex reasonably well to dare to, and at that point it was the first series, there wasn't really a precedent of, oh, just get Horn to do it. Yeah, um, was, yeah, that's very true. And I think that holds true for Tim Key as well, because in that first series, he made him eat dog food, I believe the last task of the first series. Yeah, I think a lot of the, 
a lot of the like little Alex Horn, the beaten down persona that he has, that was forged in the first series when people just used him as a sort of lackey, basically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so Greg then I think took sort of encouragement from that and started to uh, see him more and more like that himself. Um, and there's been other examples of that. Um, Tarbuck shoving Alex okay. half naked into a cake. Everyone, uh, one of the great moments. Yeah. yeah. Again, that's funny for everyone. But if you're watching that as Alex's mate, you know. Uh, uh, what a difficult few minutes of his life that is. <laughs> uh, even in my series, Bob shutting him in the, uh, cuddling him in the boot of the car again. Yeah. Very, very tricky situation for Alex. He's, um, there was also the hide and seek where, and there's been various tasks where you have to either hide from Alex or surprise him or shock him. Things yeah. like that I tend to enjoy. Um, that one where they were creeping up on him in a, uh, sort of deserted station, in was the it? Rail, in, the, in, the in the railway yard. Yeah, I think that was, was yeah, pretty that was great as well, atmospherically. Yeah. Some of the on location tasks have been great because yeah. it always brings a surprise on you when uh, suddenly they're in a new location. But yeah, I think my favorite uh, motif is tasks that are basically inconvenience uh, or worry Alex in some way. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, I, I completely get that. That's the, the, the relationship between friends is that. Uh... It, it is. And Horn's. So funny about it because his expression very, very rarely changes. There was a hide and seek game where he accidentally touched someone's tit. Uh, it was was it Mel? It was Mel. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and again, it is it, it, uh, in vision. His nothing. His, he managed to keep the deadpan thing, but obviously, re reviewing it in the studio, it was uh, as close as I've seen to someone actually dying under uh, spotlights. <laughs> so yeah, I think. Um, at least once a series, there's a moment of supreme discomfort for Horn, and uh, those, those are, I, I always look forward to those. Yeah, <laughs> especially because <laughs> I mean, it's especially funny as a mate. But even if you've not been his mate, by the time you've been on Taskmaster yourself, you 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 know, Alex has put you in all sorts of difficult spots. So yeah, um, exactly. that yeah, sort of psychic it. revenge, he does deserve what's coming to him. Yeah. We are kicking off our discussions of Series 4 today uh, with Episode 1, as is standard. Um, let's talk about the prize task. And as we go through their prize task selections, let's sort of briefly introduce the contestants and talk about um, why they're good additions to the Taskmaster Cinematic yeah. Universe. Um, so this prize task is, I'd say up top, I think one of my favourite top lines for a prize task. Also um, very difficult, I, I remember thinking at the time. Like yeah. a, a tough, even obviously you get a bit of, unlike the other tasks, you do get some prep warning for the prize task but i wouldn't have known quite where to start with this one i don't think it definitely it definitely favors people in more of a, a celebrity position i think yeah I, I think i mean there's no way i'm getting david suchet to sign a bean realistically well, exactly so <laughs> it's most interesting autograph on the most interesting vegetable um it definitely favours people like Noel Fielding and Mel and Hugh, I guess, it, it, uh, at that time, because they were probably had more links to the celebrity world. But I think yeah. because we get David Suchet on a broad bean, it's all worth it. And I feel like it's in a real sweet spot for Fielding because he seems like not only someone that would have a lot of celebrity links, but somehow he also seems like someone that would probably have weird veg growing in his garden or have access totally. to them. And furthermore, Fielding seems like he'd ask anyone to yeah. sign something. Like He's just, in a lot of ways, Fielding was a dream taskmaster contestant because his Definitely. brain is extremely elastic and inventive yeah. he's also he's capable of doing really weird stuff but then he's also got these all these odd real world skills like art and stuff like that yeah. so you yeah. saw a lot of sides of him in, in that series exactly yeah he's an incredible contestant and i think david suchet on a broad bean is he just knows exactly how to nail the perfect celebrity and perfect vegetable he yeah. has access to not an obvious one to go for very obscure but still very sort, very sort of universal as well. It's great. Yeah, and even the notion of signing something as tiny as a broad bean is, is <laughs> sort of it's inventive. I can't, I still can't. I'd love to have been there when he asked Suchet to do it. I, I'd love to know the story behind it in terms of was it? Did he take a broad bean with him to an event, and he was going to get someone to sign the broad bean? Well, these are the questions you ask yourself when you see yeah. what people have done for the prize <laughs> tasks. How did that come about? I mean. Yeah, you can only think he must have walked around with a broad bean and a, and a sharpie for a while. <laughs> he can't have known specifically Suchet was going to be there and thought, tell you what, no. Suchet will sign me a bean, because even Noel Fielding isn't as confident as that, surely. No. But you, I, I guess it's the case of a broad bean in the pocket and then turning up to an event, seeing Suchet and being like, of course, it's got to be. <laughs> oh, as soon as you see Suchet, you think, I I'm going to be furious with myself if I don't come out of it this way. But again, and Noel was much more well-known uh, than I am. I, there's no way I've got the status to do that. I think I'd be I'd be at that event thinking, I've got my bean. Who is a celebrity who 
I, like, it wouldn't be the end of the world if they thought I was an idiot here. I can't imagine yeah. Suchet looking at you blankly as you brandished a broad bean. It would be terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I think you just you take that from Noel. Like, if Noel Fielding came up to you and said, can you sign this broad bean? You'd be like, oh, here he is. Oh, they, yeah, he, wacky stuff again. he doesn't even need to mention it's on Taskmaster. He probably yeah, exactly. didn't mention it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I definitely think any task where, where Fielding has to coerce someone who's doing something odd, it, it, he's got such a... I don't know him very well, but the few times I've met him, uh, I'd totally sign a broad bean for him. I'd, yeah. I'd follow him into any sort of weird yeah. situation. <laughs> so, yeah, this is a task that, in a way, he should win. But to be fair, the standard was high. <laughs> Yeah, um, it was really hard. I mean, let's talk about some of the lower uh, the lower standards, uh, first of all. Um, Hugh Dennis uh, gave a long build-up about uh, being a fan of the American civil rights movement. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which we're all we're all on edge, and uh, and then claimed that uh, Malcolm X had signed a carrot. Uh, it didn't ever seem that likely, really. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, my experience is I, because I, I I put a lot of effort into the um into the prize task on the whole because I knew that there were points to be had there and that would make up for all the times I'd failed to get a ping pong ball out for tube or whatever the rest yeah. of it was. Yeah. Um and. Uh, I, but also I'd seen the earlier series and I did always think if you do sort of a joke one, like pretending something is Malcolm X, it, it's, it sounds good in your head, but then when you're in the studio yeah. and you see that everyone else has done it properly, yeah. you're really furious. I think this is the <laughs> moment that Hugh Dennis finds out he's really misjudged the entire series. Precisely. Well, you, you can mess about a bit and it doesn't matter if you do some tasks badly, but if there's a sense you've not really engaged with the task, that, that is punished and quite rightly, yeah. I think. This um, reminded me of um, in series seven, one of the uh, one of the prize tasks is bring the best thing beginning with G uh, and James Acaster claimed to have brought in Gandhi's glasses. So yeah. That, yeah. No, that, it's that it's pure invention. It's just it's I mean, there's always the chance that Greg will just take a shine to that sort of thing. But I feel yeah. like I also feel like as it's gone on, the, the the fan base takes the scoring more seriously and everything like that. I uh so I, I think there'd actually be scandal if if someone did a joke one and got the maximum points. I think you've got to you've got to do better than pretending. It, it, now, if you turned up with a real Malcolm X signature, then we're interested, obviously. Sure. On a, yeah. <laughs> but it just didn't seem likely that, that, for a lot of reasons, really, that Hugh Dennis could have made that happen. Yeah, especially not on like a marrow or something. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it, it does sum up Hugh, especially in this episode, of thinking he's come up with a really clever idea and then screwing it up at the last minute because he didn't even do the X properly. It's a really <laughs> weird X. Yeah, I, you've got to... We don't know how Malcolm X did this signature, but surely the X would look like an X because that yeah. was kind of his trademark. Was it? <laughs> um, Joe Lysa, I love the story behind this one, getting Greg's signature on a yellow courgette. That's right, yeah. Um, as we know ourselves, you and I, um, enlisting Greg into a task sort of against his knowledge or understanding is, is very much a mixed blessing. Yes, yeah, exactly. I mean, he... So I think Greg would have been more on board with this and would have gone the route of being talking about his own signature being genuinely interesting if the way that Joe had got that signature hadn't been lying about charity. Yeah, which again, I mean, <laughs> it's it feels like lying to the taskmaster is kind of one of the no-nos really because yeah. you, you will meet his wrath on the again someone like Lysa who's got that cheek is probably the back of his mind he might get credit for audacity but again when Greg's eyes are on you you don't like having to defend yourself like that no exactly and he hate yeah anything anything that ends up lying about charity as we saw in series one with Tim Key lying to people about charity to uh to find the um 55 year old yes that's right high five a 55 year old historic task yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, he lied to them about charity and that didn't serve him very well no so, I think Greg uh, probably quite rightly feels that it doesn't reflect well on him as the taskmaster if people are rewarded for lying about charity <laughs> Especially using his name as well. Yeah, you can do quite a lot uh, that's borderline amoral uh, or illegal in Taskmaster, but yeah. just the phrase lying about charity sort of just doesn't, it doesn't ring the right note, especially in early series where this show is still making its way a bit. Definitely. And it, and it really, I think it sums up, knowing Greg quite well as I do, it really sums up how his brain works, that he signed a yellow courgette and was told it was for a vegetable raffle, then arrived at the Taskmaster studio and was told that the prize task was most interesting signature on the most interesting vegetable, and he did not connect the two. He did not suddenly think, oh, that must have been for that. No, I mean, when... when And we'll, we'll discuss this probably another time, but when you infamously stole his trousers for me, yeah. which, again, is one of my favourite 
ever moments on Taskmaster, and I only didn't mention it earlier because I think it's a separate discussion. But even we, then, we will, we will have you back, Mark, for the episode when we discuss it on Series Five, and we will do an in a deep dive. Yeah, well, I, I think it's, it's the sort of thing that these days gets its own podcast. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's deep dive material. <laughs> um, and yeah, even then, I because by now Greg's been in, he's been in the throes of Taskmaster for five series, and. I, I, so again, I, when his trousers go missing mysteriously, I know that the task was not, it was about a high octane. It, it wasn't as anything as obvious as Nick something from Taskmaster, but I, by by the time we're five series in, if I'd been Greg, anything odd happened in my life, I would have joined the dot somehow for Taskmaster. Yeah, but course, that's yeah. again, why it was so delightful, the reveal, was that he genuinely <laughs> I was having to look back at an incident from his life and think, oh, it's this fucking show again. <laughs> as with the text, as with everything. Surely yeah. by now, there's been enough series that Greg just lives in a permanent state of fear that something unexplained is going to happen to him. Pure paranoia. Except I don't think he does, because the great thing about Greg is he's 100% Taskmaster when he's in the show, but I think he does sort of zone the show out a bit when he's not doing it, because otherwise you would live, you'd be mad. So I think basically he... I don't know Greg as well as you do, but I do get the impression he, he forgets about Taskmaster just enough that he's always shocked by the things that happen in it. Yeah, I think that's a perfect <laughs> situation to be in, isn't it? Because obviously yeah. he's very busy doing other stuff, so he can he can sort of separate that in his mind, go in, be the Taskmaster, and then just move on with his life. Whereas... Yeah, he he can't be... He's, he's got loads of stuff going on, Greg. He can't be every time someone makes an omelette thinking, now, is this is there something in this? And it's part, part of it. Am I going to one day give two points for this because I've got food poisoning? From... Um, let's talk about Lolly's prize task. I thought this was great as well. Uh, so she was the only one who took the word on uh, to mean uh, take, use, putting the autograph actually and balancing it on top of the vegetables. So she mounted it on, on vegetables. It on <laughs> yeah. vegetable. It was the black eyed peas, signed CD on some black eyed peas. I thought it was a lovely choice. Artistic, really. Like an yeah. early glimpse of Lolly's uh, eye for, for the yeah. visual, I think yeah, it's definitely. fair to say. I mean, Quite, Hugh, I don't... Hugh trying to get involved at this point. Asking if a black IP was a vegetable after his yeah. Malcolm X carrot is that the guy's got disgraceful. He's got no leg to stand on by then. <laughs> <laughs> he's hardly going to get more points into the. It is always quite funny when people contest things like that as well. Yeah. Ashton did it quite a lot in my series. There's normally yeah. one person who sort of needles the taskmaster over scoring, and again, it's not really my temperament. But even if it was, I think it's very very risky to do that. You're only going to you're risking that there'll be more points docked off you in the future. And this is yeah. the first episode as well. Hughes created the worst possible first impression here. <laughs> and continues to throughout uh, the episode. Yeah, in a way, it wasn't a misleading impression. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mel Gedroich, I mean, I'm I'm such a huge fan of Mel's. I think she's absolutely brilliant. And I think she's very unlucky not to win, really, given what she accomplished. Right? <laughs> she must have been thinking, this is five points in the bag. If I'm showing up with the whole of Take That pretty much on vegetables, I, I'm very, very confident, yeah. It's even better that the one she couldn't get was Jason Orange. I know. <laughs> you, you, in your head, that's an attainable take that amount. Yeah. Surely. <laughs> Howard Donald on a horseradish, Gary Barlow on a butternut squash, Mark Owen on a heritage squash, and Robbie Williams on a sweet potato. Yeah, and it's, it's sort just of lovely work. It's really difficult to picture the conversations. I, I don't know Gary Barlow, but it doesn't seem like it'd be an easy person to approach with a squash necessarily. No, exactly. I mean, I again, we we got no backstory, and people just accept that from Mel because of her sort of personal personality she says things like jason's gone AWOL with a rucksack and no one questioned what she meant until we get mel on the taskmaster podcast and then that will be discussed well i do think that i do think that, among other things when you get mel on it that prize task bears a bit of discussion because yeah i think i wouldn't back myself to get even one of take that to sign a vegetable no, absolutely not Mel, vegetable yes. signatures i got um howard on a horseradish gary on a butternut squash oh my god mark on a heritage squash and Robbie on a sweet potato. No. Couldn't get Jason because he's gone AWOL with a rucksack. That's fine. He's a fruit. I got him. <laughs> Task one, destroy this cake. Most beautiful destruction wins. You have 30 minutes. Your time starts now. Yeah, this is vintage Taskmaster first first episode type yeah. task like just make a lot of mess basically I love, the, I love the idea of alex watching this happen uh but not not knowing that one day one of those cakes would go up his ass that's the almost the best thing about it is, <laughs> is if you watch it now with that with benefit of that hindsight it's uh, it's even more beautiful yeah uh, i mean it's hard to argue with with if we're talking about beauty i think blowing a cake up with fireworks is is um it's a moment of life it does have this about him he, he's got a streak of of pure destructive brilliance in him he does and and similar to noel he's 
He's very artistic. He's got a real uh, artistic flair to him. Yeah, to have Lysa and Noel in the same series really was, it was a kind of, this is a kind of, yeah, artistic connoisseurs series in some way. There's a lot of very, kind of very detailed, beautiful approaches in this one. Whereas I think in my series, there were a lot of route one, hypersexual, expensive and difficult approaches. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the fireworks was incredible. It looked beautiful. The production team did a lovely job of slow mo music and all of that stuff. I think I think he gave them plenty to work with there uh, to turn that into a beautiful little film, similar to Noel as well. Cake straight in the washing machine. As soon as you saw that, you thought, "Why has no one ever put a cake in a washing machine before? Yeah, exactly. Why have I never seen this happen? <laughs> this is why I need Taskmaster in my life." Yeah, and why didn't everyone just? But why didn't we see everyone put the cake in the washing machine? Sure. Yeah. yeah feels like the only thing to do. I tried to think what I would have done, and there's no doubt that Taskmaster has provided you with a lot of opportunities for making mess. There's, you know, there's the full set of kitchen stuff. There's the bath, a small bathroom. There was loads you could have done. But again, it's only Noel that instantly thinks that's going in the washing machine. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> and, and that is absolute, as soon as you see that, that's carnage. That's, you know. Um, but then again, Lolly does something sort of creative and almost beautiful yeah. with it. I love, that- I love, I really loved Lolly's. I think in, if you're looking at the most beautiful destruction, I think hers sort of hits the brief the most perfectly. Yeah, sometimes there are tasks which didn't necessarily get much reward, but the fans of the of the series look back, I think, and you get a sort of, it's a moral victory in the long run. I think people yeah. will probably have fond memories of that. <clears throat> Yeah, I think I. I mean, I, I think it was underscored in this uh, in this task. I think. Yeah. I mean, we'll we'll talk. Let's talk about the others, uh, and, and I'll I'll give my judgment. Um, you you mentioned that the Taskmaster House provides lots of opportunities uh, to to do this task, and indeed any other task, which is makes it even even more uh, impressive that Hugh decided to just cut it up and put it in the shape of a clock. Yeah, a thing which you can do normally with a cake, basically. <laughs> like, yeah. al- almost the worst thing you can do in this task is just treat the cake like a cake, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at this point, you, 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 it crosses your mind whether Hugh is deliberately trying to lose the series for his own reasons or because, you know, I, all I can think there is there are moments in, in it where you're given well standard 20 minutes and you do totally freeze and Alex is looking at you and you spend uh as much of as 10 minutes just thinking I literally don't know I've got no idea and and yeah so sometimes it it, that accounts for it but uh, it didn't look like he was necessarily panicking it looked like he just decided to do that yeah no I don't think he was panicking at all I think uh, I think he was suffering I don't know how early they filmed that task he was suffering from something that a few people have had where if they get given a task in that room they feel like they have to stay in the room. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing how you start reading in rules which don't exist. We've yeah. seen this a lot of times. In yeah. fact, it happens constantly. Something about saying all the information is in the task, it ha- does the opposite of helping you. It makes yeah. you suspect that you're missing something. <laughs> yeah. The number of times someone's been been believed they were trapped in a room, as you say, especially that room, it, it, it happens. Yeah. Totally. I, I don't know what I would have done, but I reckon... At the very least, I think I'm chucking it out of the window or there's got to be it's mess, getting, I think. It's getting it's, smashed, it's up, getting right? smashed yeah. to hell. It's not just getting nicely cut up. Yeah, totally. Um, um, but I certainly wouldn't have thought of actually exploding it, essentially, either. No, that I mean, that was genius. Um, let's, I mean, so I think Hughes is an example of why sometimes in Taskmaster you shouldn't follow your first thought. Yeah, that's right. Just getting um, the knife and chopping it out. Whereas I think Mel's is an example of why sometimes you should absolutely follow your first thought. Yeah, because flipping it up and squat, she did that before she even finished her. Thought, she she, she, she just literally like, didn't. Bang. Just like right there, you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I also and there is a satisfaction in that for the for the uh, the tasked person. There were a couple of tasks I did uh, where twenty minutes were allocated and it's over almost immediately, and then you just you just sort of go, "Thank you very much," walk out, and it is because yeah. the camera crew are all geared up for twenty minutes. Alex has got his clock. I can't remember an example, but there were a couple where I just weirdly worked it out very quickly or. And you do feel, or not even worked it out, just did what Mel did, just did one thing. Yeah. Uh, and then then just pissed off out of the room. And there's, there's a real, there's a sense that you've pulled the rug from under them a bit, which is, it's very rewarding. Yeah, you feel pretty punk, right? Doing that sort of exactly. thing. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, I think there was, well, it was definitely one where there was almost only a bonus task, but you had to kick the yogurt into the middle of the target. Um, yeah. And I did it with almost no thought at all, just put it down uh, they'd set everything up the cameras were all ready and i just as if it's the sort of thing i did every day just <laughs> casually walked up to it 
walloped it right into the middle as if I'd been practicing it. And then I think I made a thing of just like w- keeping on walking straight into the house, just leaving them out in the garden there, what as a, if to say. What a feeling. And of course, it never got me any points, but they were generous enough to actually show it on the yeah. show. And people weirdly still talk to me about that as well, even though it wasn't an official task. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, there's something very satisfying about Mel just being, there you go. Yeah. Th- that's that. Less than a minute. <laughs> And I mean, we've got to talk about, I mean, I think this is the most I'd laughed at Taskmaster out loud up until this point, the first time I saw this. And I've never watched this moment without having to go back and watch it again. It's her being so proud of herself, slowly backing out the room and then just slightly tripping on a table. That's right, yeah. There's even moments of pride in Taskmaster are very, very close to a fall. <laughs> it's so funny. It's just that it's it, she trips the exact perfect amount. It's so good. I do remember never quite knowing when the cameras were still on you. So you, you were sort yeah. of saying, okay, well, thanks, Alex. See you next time. And um yeah enjoyed that and then sometimes that would make it into the actual yeah. show <laughs> um so it was one point for hugh again <clears throat> yeah and hugh already is in trouble here you yeah. think oh god that's it he's flapping um uh two points for lolly i feel like as much as i enjoyed mel's i feel like when you look at the brief you look at the task lolly's was better than mel's i don't know if you'd call it beautiful exactly, no, exactly. satisfying but, yes yeah um so I feel like it should have been three points for Lolly, but it was three points for Mel, uh, and then you can't really argue with uh, four points for Noel and five points for Joe. I guess you could interchange them, but they were both excellent. Yeah, and again, you're already now getting a picture of two guys that are going to do spectacular things, I think, yeah, during the definitely. series. Yeah, and then the opposite for Hugh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what cycle did you push on? <laughs> Just the regular one. Yeah, 40. I wasn't trying to clean the case. <laughs> Task two, create the best caricature of the person on the other side of the curtain. You may not look at the person. The person may only say yes or no. You'll get a bonus point if you can find out the person's full name. You have 10 minutes. Your time starts now. So this is a brilliant task. Oh. This is the ingenuity of it. I loved these sort of tasks. I didn't necessarily love doing them because your brain is fried by it. But um, yeah. this is the sort of thing that is beautiful on Taskmaster. Just yeah. like so simple, but also devilish. Um Again, as we've said, Noel comes in with an advantage here because, it, unfortunately for us all, he can, as well as everything else he can do, yeah. paint really well. Annoying. <laughs> Very annoying. Um, um, th- I this... mean, even even things like him selecting the chopping board so he stands out a bit more, like he uses a different yeah. medium. It's just... Exactly. I mean, really, who else is thinking about the medium at yeah. this stage? <laughs> Very clever stuff. And um, the um, the you can only say yes or no thing reminded me a bit of when we had to work out who was who were the Finns in an identity parade yeah. in a studio task. That same thing of trying to get your head around this kind of game, a game of bluff and chance while also trying to do a physical task like drawing or painting. I mean, it is yeah. some sort of taskmaster test a lot of different things at the same time and it's also a tricky one because you you need to ask the right questions and it's so difficult to work out what the right questions would be um for yes or no questions so obviously there's a moment where joe's just joe asks about eight questions about her necklace yeah and then has to say do you think I'm, do you think i'm asking too many questions about your necklace? yeah you, your brain just gets bogged down by one very sort of detail and then you think right well i've got all the information about the necklace but how am i actually gonna uh, draw yeah. that though <laughs> um i mean look they the others were grouped together for a reason. I mean, they all went about it in quite a standard way. Uh, and, you know, there were mixed results with the with the drawings. But we've got to talk about Hugh, who I think this is this is a really good loophole he finds here. This is yes, Hugh did prize the name out of them, didn't he? Yeah, by, by getting by getting her to write it down, which is great. That's right, that's, that's right. So yeah. Good. And then obviously the mirror, I think I think is genius because he then argues with Alex that you're not looking, you're not at, looking at yourself. At and I think he accounts himself very well there, but it's absolutely vintage Hugh Dennis that he does all of that. He seems like the cleverest man in the room. But he then, still doesn't come away with the point yet. <laughs> because the drawing is the worst piece of shit. Yes, I can't help being reminded of when I was the only one to work out the rainbow task by putting the light on, but I still couldn't draw a rainbow for shit. So again... Well, I, I, um, I had a very similar experience uh, in Series 9 where... Um, uh, we had ice lollies. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To arrange them in color, order color of the rainbow. That's right. Do it by taste. But I w- found the dodo so I could take my blindfold off. And then I still didn't know. Still didn't get the rainbow. I remember that. In, <laughs> yes. in, in fact, when I saw that, I had flashbacks, of course. To my, <laughs> the rainbow is a dangerous object in Taskmaster. <laughs> but yeah, this was a great one. The um, the We didn't know it at the time, but the looking in the mirror and saying that's not looking at a person uh, was a sort of 
prefigured the sort of thing I now hear Tim Key say on No More Jockeys quite a lot, like what seems yes, like a spurious yeah. argument, but dug in so hard that yeah. you sort of have to respect it. And as you say, brilliant mixture of incompetence and cunning, yeah. uh, really, for me. Also, as soon as you see him ask someone to write the name down, it's so ob- it seems so obvious. Yeah. It's a massive yeah. loophole, really. But again, in the heat of it, you just don't think of stuff like that. Your brain is... Uh, yeah, you're worrying about the whether you've got their nose right or something, and just and just the worst the worst drawing. I think he's so pleased with himself about the mirror thing that he doesn't spend enough time doing the drawing. I think similar happened with the rainbow when I and probably with you with the lollies. Once you if you think you've got the key to the task, you forget you still got to do something well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Hugh at this point was as adrift as we've seen a contestant yeah. at this early stage. I think not even yeah. niche, you know. Yeah, exactly. He gets two points because he does get the name right and he deserves the point for that absolutely Um, yeah it's three points for mel who also gets the full name which is very impressive even though her first guess is john t williams (laughs) that's right yeah yeah the the two people that scored the lowest did did get the name but fielding wasn't really concerning himself too much with that he knew he had it for the actual art yeah it's five points for noel uh Four points for Joe. I think Lolly was underscored again here, actually. I, I feel like yeah. she obviously didn't get the name, but her drawing is is way more accurate. Yeah, it's already emerging that Lolly is very handy at various forms of art here. In fact, yeah. as I've said, a worrying number of them actually actually yeah. were. Um, yeah, you can make a case Lolly's unlucky consistently in this episode. Sometimes that does happen, and then you have this faith that it might be evened out in another yeah. episode, but that that is giving much too much credit to, to Greg as the Taskmaster. There's no um, <laughs> th- there's no sense that it would spoil it if you ever thought the producers were saying, ah, you should level that up a bit or something. The, yeah, the, the, they're uh, definitely not. And he comes at each task completely fresh as well. Yeah, so absolutely. Just... No, I don't think he's even bothered about who's, who's winning. Yeah. I think he's yeah. purely... So that, the arbitrary nature of it, sometimes people would tweet me and say you should have got more or you should, you should have got less for that and you have to say each time it's i'm afraid you must take this up with greg but also don't because you won't remember yeah. or really care <laughs> <laughs> well yeah hugh looked at the image of her in the mirror several times and he drew this <laughs> I really like- yeah Sitting side on. Yeah. Oh, you've yeah. got the aspect right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but for you, what we've learnt to you is that a mirror image takes a black woman <laughs> into a fat, bald, white man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not in many right. ways, yeah. it is the Michael Jackson story. <laughs> Task three, fell all the rubber ducks. Fastest wins, your time starts when the first rubber duck balls and this of course is where there's a turnaround scoring wise finally finally hughes hughes uh, machinations actually come come home to roost that's not a phrase but... yeah he wins it by a margin which is ridiculous when you look at the figures yeah but I, I this is one of those ones where i watched it and thought of course that's what you do but if i was presented with that i'd be i'd be chucking bowling balls at the fences <laughs> it's absolutely the same there's no way i would have thought laterally about this i would have just both me and nish would have just been throwing everything in the world at it and hoping yeah. for the best nish would have taken his trousers and pants off and thrown it at the face. He, he certainly would have, nish would have launched himself out of a <laughs> cannon out of ducks but not quite made it <laughs> yeah this is a good example of how uh, a cool head c- can be worth a lot more points than than actual effort in Tuskmaster. yeah for sure um i think just yeah just staying calm working out the system before you do crack on with it i think is so key in some of these uh, and hugh tying ropes around each piece of fence and around the bottom of the ducks there and then just it's just three pulls bang 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 all done brilliant quite amazing uh bit of logic really because as as it says in the task it's only when the first duck falls that you're being timed so he had all the time he wanted to tie the fence i wouldn't have thought that i would have been thinking I was been just desperately trying to fell the first yeah. duck, but that's not how you meant it. That's you know, this is all about thinking and then action. Yeah, totally. which is not that's not up my uh, street at all. Um, Joe, I would have no. done something like Joe did. He he used that time to get to basically lay out a jumble sale on the lawn. Yeah, and then just chuck everything, <laughs> everything possible. I think I'm very similar. Yeah, I'd have emptied that shed of everything I could yeah. find, <laughs> and then just absolutely 
plastered them out of the ducks, which is a way of getting some points, no doubt about it. I got quite yeah. a lot of three pointers for just doing the crudest but most vaguely effective thing I could. But very rarely did I solve a task like you here. That's yeah. not quite my wheelhouse. Oh, you'd be, I'd be so chuffed if I did that. I'd be like, well, it sort of doesn't matter what happens in any of the other tasks. So I'm just it's true. I have that moment. Yeah, I had that moment with the rainbow, but it instantly faded because I, my rainbow was so shit that I only got three <laughs> points and I was mocked for much longer than if I'd just done the task badly. <laughs> um Noel surprisingly just goes a bit route one with this by throwing tennis balls at the Ducks. But again, you can see he's quite good at throwing, which is another thing. He, another he is good at everything. It wouldn't have amazed me if that had worked instantly. But yeah. again, knowing Noel, it wouldn't have amazed me if he just sort of found a way of talking to the Ducks and persuaded them to fall <laughs> down or something. Well, nothing seems beyond him. Um, Mel's was a disaster. Uh, the tennis ball to a piece of rope and using it as a lasso. Um, I mean... Terrible. As you say that, it does sound quite far-fetched as a yeah. <laughs> solution. And that is one of those moments where we all had these uh, in the in the house where you're aware that it's just going on longer and longer. And without knowing how well anyone else has done, you do think, I don't think I'm winning this. I, I've yeah. been doing this for more than five minutes now. Yeah. Um, and even though the, the crew and even Alex are pretty unobtrusive, j- just because... Uh, because of and and because it still is fun, but you you do become more and more aware that there's like six people standing there with with cameras and stuff, waiting for you to do something that you just can't do. And that does, as soon as that creeps into your head, you're in problems. Before lunch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you never wanted the last task before lunch yeah. to be one that would take you 25 minutes to do, like a twat. Yeah. Um, so uh, eventually, uh, even more frustratingly for Mel, eventually settles on the rope pulley system, the the Dennis system, uh, as does uh, as does Noel, I think. But it's much too late by then, of course. It's too late. Yeah. It's it's too late. Yeah, what's oh. impressive is you somehow had that idea immediately. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Lolly uh, comes up with a good system by moving the fences closer, but not too close. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Which and is always a difficult thing to see where you see someone come up with a perfect loophole and then not exploit it. It's funny, isn't it? It happens quite a lot. I think a part of your brain doesn't believe the loophole can be real, so you yeah. sabotage yourself. You think, well, yeah. it can't be this simple. But it was in that one. Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah, she used the hose, which I thought was a good idea, but initially it was, she was just giving the duck sort of a gentle shower. It's a great task because there's so many possible approaches. But again, as a contestant, that does tend to become quite anxiety inducing. Any task where it was like, you may use anything in this shed and you're looking around it and there's 45 different items there. You're absolutely panicking. I I preferred it when there's just one, you're holding one thing and you've got to get it far away or something. At least there's only so many ways you can do that. Yeah. Once there's loads of props involved, you're thinking, oh shit. And you're Uh, looking going, well, they must have put the perfect thing mm. in here somewhere. I don't remember that rake being there before, so surely that means something. That must be a clue. Yeah, once you're ever thinking like that, you're in big trouble. You have to free your mind of anything like that. Um, so it was one point for Mel, uh, two points for Noel, three points uh, for Joe, four points for Lolly, and finally, it's the big five for Big Hugh. And very satisfying from a, a viewer's point of view to suddenly see Hugh go from one to five. It gives you a, a taste of how he's going to be a sort of feast or famine type yeah. contestant. I seem to, I mean, we're going to talk about the rest of the episodes, obviously, in the coming weeks. I seem to remember it was mainly famine. Yeah, there was a fair uh, bit of famine, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can do some good work with that. <laughs> yeah, I've gone a bit dizzy. Is this. Oh, shut up. <laughs> good run up with that. Just keeps going. Oh, my God, there's a bowling ball. There's a bloody bowling ball in there. Live task, make the most juice. You must pick one fruit and one tool. Uh, if you pick the same tool as someone else, you must juice blindfolded. If you pick the same fruit as someone else, you must juice one-handed. If you pick the same fruit and tool as someone, you must juice blindfolded, one-handed, and bouncing up and down. You have one minute. Um, uh, I mean, this is the sort of thing that if you're reading that in the studio with a live audience, you're thinking, hang on, what is happening? <laughs> what is going on? The, the, the longer, the more clauses are introduced, the more you're thinking, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just going to grab two things and hope for the best here. Now, with uh, you said you put a lot of effort into the prize tasks because you knew what you'd done in the pre-recorded yeah. tasks. Was there any feeling when it came to the studio task of I've really, I've really got to nail this? Definitely, especially because a couple of times I was on the whole scoring better than I expected. So there were a couple of times when I could win or lose an episode on the prize task, and no matter how uncompetitive you are i loved the idea of actually winning an episode getting the getting the task uh, the prizes all that stuff and just that moment of um so there were i think at least two maybe three live tasks where 
I did feel genuine pressure, like it was like I was in a sports match or something. Especially, of course, yeah. quite a large studio audience there as well. There's a real atmosphere in the in the room for those moments. So yeah, I could properly feel the adrenaline race. And I, I remember that before the prize talk, and of course, you wouldn't you know get this on the telly, but uh, there's a quite lengthy camera reset set while they set up the tasks. So I'd be you'd be there for 10, 15 minutes thinking you'd see it being maybe you'd see bits of what was happening. Something would be brought in, like in this case, fruit and instrument. You're starting to guess, yeah. but you can't really, or it's behind a curtain. So you can't, but your brain, I say your brain, this would normally just be chatting to Ashley, but I, I would be there <laughs> a little bit on my own, just thinking now nah. I would, I would often chat to Bob and Sally or, but you, you, the, the slightly more serious point scorers, you could see us all thinking, I wonder what's coming here a bit. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, when it comes out, there's no way you could have mentally prepared for it because it's some bullshit like this. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it is. It's This is a hilarious studio task. It's really good. Uh, it just turns into chaos. I think that's something that Alex is really good at doing, of just of being able to think to the last image. So knowing what he needs to ask people to do to Absolutely. create the most chaos at the and, end of it. And he really does love, for somebody who's so um, orderly and seems so sensible and is in some ways, Alex also adores total mess yeah. and chaos as our number jockeys game show or if he, he gets a sort of gets the devil in him alex i think yeah one of his i think one of his uh guiding principles is what what will have the most different approaches as i say what what will we get five different approaches? but yeah. without doubt another one of them is just what will cause the most absolute carnage <laughs> yeah, how, can, how can we make you dennis smash a pineapple on a floor uh, certainly one finding is that a pineapple's got maybe slightly less juice in it and than you think unless you properly go at it and certainly yeah. grapes so i think i'd have gone grapes but of course there's only a tiny amount per grape in there yeah but i would have done grapes and shoe because then at least you can put the grapes in something and step on it which that's, is a classic classic way of getting juice out of a grape that's true that's what they actually that's what they do in real life to some extent yeah, isn't yeah, it yeah 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 that's a good point yeah there is again you've got to make the decision so quickly and but i think lime is a really brave choice instinctively you don't think that a lime is much of a giver fruit wise yeah. but lime and lime and shoe was the perfect lime and shoe is the dream ticket it turns yeah. out yeah no, no one else picked it and uh easily got seven mils out of it um it, it was a real game of the, i had a few tasks like they always come up the tasks of you'll be deducted points if you do the same as someone else and then you yeah. are in a sort of then you're in a real fiendish position of trying to read other people's minds when you don't even know them that well yeah so lime exactly. with shoe is inspired because lime does seem like probably an unfashionable choice and there's something about being a comic as well that when you pick the same as someone else you feel wholly unoriginal and yeah you're furious you think yeah. i i'm meant to i'm meant to be the guy that comes up with yeah, yeah. there was a, a, at least one task i think it was the coconuts on a sledge thing where it was i think it was you're disqualified if you use anything else that yes. anyone else yeah, uses yeah, yeah. i agonized i was trying much too hard to get into the psychology of someone like sally phillips who i don't think i'd met at the time yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, Hugo's pineapple with tweezers, but doesn't use the tweezers. There's no way he uses the tweezers. He just smashes it. So I think that should have been point uh, point. This off. could have been disqualified, yeah, because yeah. you can't. You're not telling me he gets four mils out of uh, no way. out no of way. with tweezers. Tweezers is a mad choice. Yeah, uh, tweezers to... is a mad choice. But Noel does grapes with tweezers, but he's only allowed to use one hand. But he's clearly using another hand to steady the cup. Some funny stuff goes on in these live tasks, and it is quite difficult. If you see someone you, that you think has been the rules, you can't really appeal to the ref in these situations. No, you just got to hope it gets picked up, basically. Yeah, but I so I think Lolly actually did use one hand with grapes with hammer and got the one point. Noel got two points. Uh, Joe pineapple pineapple hammer, good choice three points hugh pineapple with nothing i'd say uh four points and then lime with shoe gets yeah mel a clear winner and it's funny i mean again that's if if he'd been disqualified that's a three or four point swing yeah and in the first episode maybe it doesn't matter so much but you can't help looking at the points mounting up as the episodes go by and thinking yeah there's a lot on these protests yeah, now let's not mess about too much the final scores of episode one i think the uh I think the future leaders of the series have marked themselves out pretty quickly. Uh, it's Noel uh, winning on 18, then Joe on 17, Mel on 16, and Hugh and Lolly on 13, which I think unfair for Lolly and lucky for Hugh. Yeah, yeah it does It does Lolly a disservice <laughs> yeah. to, to have tied that episode with Hugh when you look at the entire thing. <laughs> Absolutely. 
But yeah, Noel in particular has set himself out as a guy that can turn his hand to a, a lot of things. I remember Alex telling me that Noel was going to be on it. Um, I think he'd maybe tried to book him before. And I did feel immediately like that's perhaps the strongest, on paper, the strongest Taskmaster contestant you can yeah. think of, really, just because of his the combination of his brain and his weird stuff that he can do. Yeah, and I guess similar, I guess Mortimer was a similar booking as well. Yeah, yeah and I think... I thought all along, I got in the end weirdly close to w- winning it, but I did. I did feel that Mortimer was a likely winner from the outset. It, just knowing he was, occasionally I can't kind of think we know him very well, but occasionally I would fuck up a task and think that's the sort of thing Mortimer would probably be able to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, yeah. he conveys I can do odd stuff, and also I will think of odd ideas. And both so calm as well, similar in that that they're creative, very good at a lot of things, and then also just don't seem seemingly don't care about winning. Yeah, if you can somehow keep your head in that Taskmaster house, then you will come up with much better ideas. But really, you've got to be someone like Bob Mortimer or Noel Fielding to do that. I think yeah. a normal person cannot open one of those scrolls without immediately panicking a bit. Um, so we've got some emails, Mark. Um, as I say, a lot of the emails that came in were about the trousers, but we are going to discuss that in a future. Quite rightly, it was a, it was a. A perfect crime, famously. Yeah. Our deep dive uh, uh, 10 episode series, uh, True Crime. It's the new series of Serial is about the trousers being stolen. I do think when you look at what some people get 10 episodes of a podcast out of, <laughs> we've, we've got a chance. Um, th- some of them are hilariously specific, these questions, Mark, but I, I, I feel like you, more than anyone, will have answers for them. I've certainly got very clear memories of almost every moment of it, yeah. <laughs> Um, this is from this is from uh, Chris, uh, who lives in the USA. Hello, Ed. Question for Mark that has bothered my wife and I since he said it. In the task that started with opening a briefcase, uh, Mark yeah. said something like, "Well, I'm not supposed to own one of these." What in all what? <laughs> What in all that has ever and will ever existed does that mean? Why is Mark Watson not supposed to own a briefcase? <laughs> now I. Th- I don't know. I don't remember saying that, but I can only think it refers to the fact that I'm uh, extremely clumsy with uh, small scale physical tasks, as we saw them, because I couldn't open the briefcase and that wasn't the task. Yeah. Um, it was just, and I, even Alex, who knows me very well, his, his jaw was dropping watching me fuff about with this briefcase. So I, I, all I can think was I must have basically meant a briefcase is not something I would ever have because I know that even opening the combinations is the sort of thing that would frustrate me and um right. and therefore so I I never I, I wouldn't let myself own one. Anything that I think is going to cause me difficulty and frustration, I'm just you've got better a list. Off. you've got a list of things you're never allowed got, to own. I've got a list of blacklisted items. Yeah. And the briefcase is exactly the sort of thing that I, I would look at that. Mind you, I can't see why I would own one. I think it probably was my first ever attempt at opening a briefcase. I've never I don't well. <laughs> Well, it didn't exactly, it didn't suggest to me that me and briefcases were meant to be. No, that was a real a surreal out of body moment because I was well aware that Alex and the cameras and everyone were thinking, this is better than we even yeah. imagined. <laughs> this is, the task hasn't started. This is this is bonus content. Um, yeah, th- this, this is a good question because I do want to talk a bit more about this. Um, hi, Ed. My question for Mark is more of a request, really. I'd absolutely love to hear some more of the 148 cheeky texts to Greg. Love, Epec from Istanbul. Now, you may not have them, uh, Mark, but I do want to talk. I want, I want to talk more about this task. Well, yeah, I somewhere they are all compiled in a little book, which yeah. I think Alex has still got. That Every Christmas, people tweet... Uh, me or Alex to ask if they should will be released as a Christmas book, and I'm not quite sure what's stopping them from doing that because yeah. there's a there is a noticeable audience for it. Um, the tasks, um, the checks were, I mean, yeah, I of course I didn't know I was the only one doing it. I didn't know what the parameters were. I, I definitely did write 148 of them. Um, there, were, what not everyone knows is that um, I I also filmed this Bear Grylls thing on an island for a month during the cheeky text period. Yeah. So I had to pre-write uh, about 30 <laughs> of the text. Um, but I think what I tended to do was uh, go on Mark, a... You came, you came, I'd say, close to dying on that Bear Grylls thing. So uh, that, yeah, I, that could have been your last thing you left to the world. I, 30 could have written been... cheeky text to Greg Day. My final written work could have been that, <laughs> yeah. And I'm not sure how I'd feel about that. G- given the, the uh, response to it, I'd probably be quite happy with that, actually. Yeah. Um, what I would tend to do was... Uh, the ones they read out were mostly... Uh, either about like it'd be something like can I can I borrow some money or I've got a big dick which I came back to several times. Um, <laughs> what I would tend to do is get on a bit of a get on a bit of a run of them. So 
once I'd, I think my general idea was the first few would be genuinely cheeky and then I would just do the one about a big dick. Yeah. Then I thought, what other forms of cheek are there? So, uh, for example, the, each, each text that was seen represents quite a long-running um, motif. So that thing about, can I borrow... Uh, the money for I think that went on for ages. I think about twenty texts were just like I sent him my bank details one day. Right. I'd every now and again check back in and say sorry, it's so embarrassing, but just about this loan. Um, I'd I'd suggest there was also uh, there was one series of texts which was uh, I'm in Manchester. If you found if the taskmaster fancies a, qu- a quick half or something with a winking emoji, I was in Manchester. And I think the next day I went back in London, we could have that half now. <laughs> and uh, again, I think I did about 10 days of trying. But of course, I didn't, I genuinely didn't know that I was harassing Greg to the extent that I was in real yeah. life. Um, so that was basically, and I remember that by the final, the final few led right up to the record day as well. They timed it like that on purpose. So the last few were just saying, can't believe I'm finally going to see you. We'll be together at last. Or like, flirtatious stroke actually romantic yeah. i i think my last the very last one was something like see you later cutie and that was um that was it so yeah they do tell a story but but never the, a response never a response never the glimmer of a response which is why i didn't think they could be going to greg's real phone <laughs> I, I i thought well this is a producer's getting this and harvesting this and this will just be a funny task yeah. but as was revealed on the show because I'd, because it was one a day, I'd often not remember till just before midnight. So he was very often at like quarter to midnight, just getting a text saying, "Oh, wish you were in bed with me" or yeah. something like that. And uh, it's what it's the it's what the full majesty of the task is really. Not that it was a, a trick on me, but it was in a, almost in a, more of a sense, it was a massive trick on Craig. Yeah. Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> what I what I don't think I've ever uh, revealed before is that about two weeks after the studio recording, I did send Greg another text. Uh, I sent him a selfie from a train. I was wearing a nice shirt for a corporate gig, and I said, um, oh, just w- thought you might like to see what I'm wearing. Um, <laughs> and for the first time ever, Greg replied and said, ah, now this delights me. <laughs> so uh, maybe maybe now we can get something going. <laughs> Great. Love it. Um, one, one more question uh, from Mallory from Tennessee. In, the people who email in are from all over the world, Mark. It, Very it's... rarely do we get an email from the UK. Yeah, I knew Taskmaster was... It was already popular when I did it, but I couldn't have imagined the the global reach yeah. of it. P- people send me questions about it sometimes from uh, very unexpected places. Uh, yeah. the Taskmaster. Oh, yeah. Great. My question for Mark: uh, Did he ever finish that four thousand piece puzzle of Greg's face? <laughs> no, uh, that we ne- never got. My my girlfriend did the bulk of that, yeah. and um, that was a prize task which was. Uh, in theory, amazing, but would I realised we, we'd bitten off much too much to chew, and uh, and it was a real, it was a bit of a, a kick in the guts getting, I think, two points for that because even yeah. the amount that was done was absolutely. That's a good example of a prize task which. If I had the idea for it even a month earlier, maybe. But then could have got the four thousand pieces finished and still uh, got two points. Of course, that's the that's the beauty and the cruelty of Taskmaster. Yeah. Mark Watson, thank you so much for coming on the Taskmaster podcast. Uh, At the end of every Taskmaster podcast, we ask our guests to rate their experience on the podcast between one and five in the style of the Taskmaster. So please now give your point score uh, for your appearance on the Taskmaster podcast. I have no hesitation in giving it five because... um... Most most people's favourite type of podcast is just talking about a popular thing that you did in the past, uh, yes. basically, <laughs> and, and occasionally talking about some other stuff that people did. So, in, you know, in terms of low effort to high enjoyment, hard to argue with it. Also, I know that shitloads of people listen to this podcast, so that already puts it above yeah. the podcast you do where at the end of it you think, I, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what the point of that was. <laughs> yeah, that was an hour of my life. That <laughs> yeah, we've all done those. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think if you look at all the matrices of um, popularity of the podcast, the fun of talking about Taskmaster, etc. Uh, you've done a very nice job, Ed. Happy with it all. Great, good to hear. Thank you very much, Mark Watson. Well, there we have it. Another episode of the Taskmaster podcast. We have kicked off with series four in style. Thank you very much to Mark Watson for coming onto the show. And like I said a couple of times, we're going to have Mark back. You know, there's so much to talk about. Series five is coming up, you know, after we've done series four. uh, And I think we can all agree, absolute belter of a series. So we've got plenty to chat to Mark about there, including Trousergate. So keep watching Taskmaster on all four. Watch along with us. Watch whatever episode you like, really. Just watch it all day. Watch it all the time. Check out the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Taskmaster. 
Check out the Taskmaster store for all your Taskmaster gift needs. And of course, keep listening to this podcast. Please email us with any of your questions for future guests, taskmasterpodcast at gmail.com. I will try, I will endeavour in future to let you know the special guests in advance on my social media and across the Taskmaster social media. But for now, we will see you next week. Goodbye! For more Taskmaster, subscribe now!